from Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. My name, Juan Marie. I cook 15 years. Observed, everyday vegetables often very dull. I'd like you to know about French's Worcestershire sauce. Reason, French is Worcestershire that make big difference in cooking. Please to listen. French's Worcestershire is honorable sauce cherished for generations. Rich with rare ingredients, exotic spices. Example, one ingredient, soy. Very special with vegetables. French's Worcestershire, full of spicy ingredients. Fifteen in all, as good as soy. Uh, but not Chinese. You try vegetables cooked this way. One tablespoon French's Worcestershire added to boiling vegetable water causes mouth to also water. Ah, so? Just be sure of name. French's Worcestershire, from honorable makers of French's mustard. Thank you. Hey, that there was a big one. You see that, Mr. Dillon? No, no, I didn't, Chester. Oh, my. If you're counting heads, I didn't see it either. Only heads I'm counting is catfish, Crown. And that there was number six since we've been riding down here along the riverbank. You right sure you can count that high? To six? Well, you ain't saying you can go higher. Well, you listen to me, Ben Crown. I can count high as need be. I'll stand up to anybody doing sums. Ain't that a fact, Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon. What? Uh, what was that, Chester? Well, I was just remarking to Ben Crown how I can do my sums with the best of them. Well, that's fine. Fine. It, it come to mind the way I was counting catfish. How are you on cottonwoods? Oh, every bit is good. Well, I count three just ahead there. Yes, sir, three it is, Mr. Dillon. All right, we'll stop there and one of the horses. Yes, sir. And you can do your sums while we're resting, Chester. Sort of keep your hand in, you might say. <laughs> I'll tell you something, Mr. Crown. Me and Mr. Dillon, we brought in prisoners before that was a sight funnier, and you are just a sight funnier. All right, let them drink it, Chester. Yes, sir. Well, how about my horse? Water it. With my hands tied? You can hold a saddle horn, you can water your horse. I ain't scum, Marshal. I'm not a killer, neither. Just on your say-so. It's not my say-so, Crown. You're the face on the wanted poster. That's all I know. And that's good enough for you, is it? Good enough for me to bring you in. Now, you gonna water your horse? I'm gonna catch a wink. I'm not gonna forget you, Marshal. You might want to think on that. I'm not going to forget you. Mr. Dillon. Hmm? Mr. Dillon, best rouse yourself, man. Uh, oh. Oh, Chester, I guess I must have dozed off. The horses is all watered and rested up. We're going to make Dodge by evening. Yeah. Well, we better get a woo on, I guess. Well, what about eating? I can't go the live long day on hardtack. Chances are you'll find out you can, Crown. We won't be eating until we get to Dodge, will we, Mr. Dillon? Wait a minute, Chester. What? That, that's coming from up behind the trees there. Sounds like somebody digging up there. 
There's a law against that. Now, you're the one belly aching about food. If somebody lives up there, we might get a handout. Come on, let's go see. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, you're not making much of a dent with that spade. Now tell me something I don't know. You look like you could use some rest. I don't need you now. You could have come earlier. Two days, three. It might have mattered then. I sure don't need you now. Mr. Dunn, she's just skin and bone. You're no good to me coming now. Well, you sure shouldn't be out in the heart of the day this way. You know should and shouldn't, do you? Well, I, I just mean the sun is punishing, man. The sun, the land, the life. It's all punishing. Now go on with you. You're too late. Too late. Too late for what, man? Leave me be. Just leave me be. Now let me have the spade, ma'am. You're not strong enough. It won't matter. I die in the try and leave me to my work. Miss Dillon? <laughs> she just crumpled up. Yeah. I'll carry her inside. Ain't no food here from the looks of her. She's starving to death. Chester, bring Crown along. I'll just spread out that bed so you can put it down, Mr. Dillon. Now, there's a cot here. Besides, looks like the bed's occupied. Well, he's dead. Yeah. Two, three days dead. Like she said, she was trying to dig a grave. Well, that poor thing... She must be near crazy all alone here and him dead. All right, start a fire. Get some water boiling. Find some coffee. Find some food if you can. Right away, Mr. Jones. You untying me, Marshal? For what? He was a big man, Crown. Dig a big grave. <laughs> Hi, Joan. I'm heading for the ballpark. I'm late now. Gil Hodges, look at the list of errands you've left for me to do again. And I'm so busy with spring cleaning. I know, but it's spring cleaning time for the car, too. So please be sure to get the motor oil changed in the car and get a fresh Fram filter, too, honey. A fresh Fram filter, Gil? <laughs> what for? To keep the oil clean. Dirt and sludge can ruin an engine. Nothing fills motor oil with sludge faster than the short runs you make shopping and taxing the children to school. Just take the car in and ask for a Fram. A Fram? How will they know what I mean? They'll know. More service stations sell Fram filters than any other brand. Nothing keeps oil clean like a Fram filter. The Dodgers' popular first baseman, Gil Hodges, sure knows his filters. He knows how important it is to change oil filters at least every 5,000 miles. It's Fram for him, for you too. Fram filters. <laughs> Feeling some better, ma'am? Letty. Letty Thatcher. You saved my life. I guess you can call me Letty. You want some more coffee, Letty? Oh, this'll do me. Uh, I, I thought there was three of you. Oh, they're outside. I guess you found Luther. Yes, we found him. Did you set him in the ground yet? Uh, we thought you'd want that. I've been trying to do it myself all these days. I lost track of how many. He was a long time dying, a long time lying there dead. I couldn't help him die. 
And I couldn't help him once he did. You got no neighbors? <laughs> Nobody fool enough to live here but Luther Thatcher. He was bound he wouldn't live near no settlement. It'd choke him, he said. Crowd around him and choke him. Well, I could have stood a little of the choking myself. Uh, we're heading for Dodge City, Letty. We'd be glad to take you along. I'm the marshal there. Might be able to help you get settled. Uh, settled at what? At living with people around. Oh, I, I don't need folks now. I don't need nothing now. Everything I got's here. You can't stay on here alone, Letty. Off this way, it's not safe for a woman alone. Safe? I don't know what that means, Marshal. Don't don't talk safe to me. I got the roof Luther left me. I got a stove and a bed. But you can't work the land. We couldn't find much food around. We got potatoes in the ground. And the Lord knows the prairie's alive with rabbits. I'll make do. Well, can't force you to come with us, Letty. But if something like pride is keeping you here now, that's a big price to pay. Pride. Pride. I'll show you something, Marshal. Here, out the window. Now, if you look close, you can still make them out. Toward the river from Luther's grave, there's five more. You see, just little mounds of dust now. But you can make them out. Yes, I can make them out. My babies. Five of them. One for each year we've been here. Them and Luther now. All I got in the world is here, Marshal. I'm not leaving them. You're not afraid to stay? I guess I'd be afraid to go. I just don't see her living on there alone, Mr. Dillon. She can't see doing anything else. It's up to her, Chester. I bet we must have rode ten miles before we come to another farm. She just sat out there in the middle of nowhere, no one to tend for her, see to her. Why don't you go back and marry her, Chester? You're so all fired sorry for her. I got a kindly feeling for her, that's all. You collect stray cats, too, do you? Digging a grave makes you pretty mean, doesn't it, Crown? His kind just naturally born mean, Mr. Dillon. I don't see the sense of choking up over a mule stubborn old woman. You gave her the chance to get out. She's bound she's going to stay. Well, let her. Don't cry for her. You're a practical man, Crown. I'm that all right, Marshal. But you don't know the first thing about a woman's age. If Letty's 25, she's not a day older. She looks 50. And part of it's the prairie. Part of it's the wear of living. The strain she's been under. She could use some plain good food, too. Plump her up a little dab. She'd be right pretty. Some good plain food. Now, that don't hurt nobody. I'm going to be awful surprised if it makes you any better looking, Ben Crown. <laughs> Just a minute. Now, let me get this straight, Chester. Uh, you want me to prescribe something for it, is that it? No, no. Now, Doc, I didn't say that exactly. What I said was I wanted you to prescribe something. Well, that's what I said. You said prescribe something for me. Well, I didn't say it was for me. Oh, well, then, uh, well, well, who is it for? You'd have to know that, I suppose. Well, it'd help. Now, you tell me who it is, and I'll go and see him. No, I can't do it that way. Um, Chester, there are times when you don't make any sense at all, and this is one of them. Now, I've had a busy day, and I'd just as soon go to bed as play this game, whatever it is, with you. It's no game, Doc. My goodness, it's serious as can be. Now, look, I I I'll tell you. Let's say it it's me that's ailing. But I don't know any powers that'll fix what ails you. Well, let's say I'm off my feet. Off your feet. I'm you? dragging around, half-starved. I need something to pick me up. Uh, like a tonic. That's it. Now, you just give me a nice bottle of tonic, and we'll forget the whole thing. A nice bottle of tonic? It don't matter the color, red or green. I got red from the last medicine show that come through here, but I ain't in the least particular as to color. Just something to 
put the bloom in my cheeks again. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Chester. I... Well, now, Doc, I aim to pay. Now, you listen to me. In case you don't recollect, we just came from dinner at Delmonico's. You ate steak and eggs and two helpings of stew, bread and gravy. And, and a slice of pie. All right. Now, I don't call that being off your feed. And you're not dragging around. You're waddling around from eating too much. You don't think I need a tonic, do you? I would put tonic last on the long list of things that you need. Well, what about the bloom in my cheeks? Chester. Hmm? Good night. Now, Doc, you... Good night. Oh. Good night. Was it a hard trip, Matt? No, they're all hard, Kitty. We rode most of the way to Abilene for nothing, as it turned out. You brought a prisoner back. A Ben Crown, but he's the wrong man. Got a telegram this morning from Wichita. A man named Keeper confessed. Huh? Crown wasn't even implicated. Well, Chester says Crown kept telling you all along he was the wrong man. When did you see Chester? <laughs> Bright and early this morning. Sam gave him some money, and he picked out a couple of my old traveling dresses. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He picked out what? A couple of my old dresses. Why? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, he wasn't too clear. He said they'd be put to good use, and he told Sam the same about his money. He muttered something about Doc not seeing fit to give him any tonic, and they went off to Jonas to collect from him. I suppose you knew about it. All I know is Chester hasn't been around much since we got back. I kidded him a little about it, asking if he'd picked himself a wife while he was gone, and... Well, I know this sounds far-fetched, but I, I swear he blushed. I'll be done. Well, where are you going? I think I better go find Chester. Now, Matt, if you're not supposed to know, don't you dare tell him I told you. No, I won't, Kitty. This is something I think I'd rather Chester told me himself. <laughs> Afternoon, Chester. Yeah. Oh, oh, my goodness, Mr. Dillon. I, I, I thought you'd be gone some longer. Oh, buying the town out, are you? you well, you're referring to these parcels, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose I am. Well, might as well come right out with it. I'd have told you at the first, Mr. Dillon, but folks seems to delight in just making sport of me. I just didn't want to hear no more about me being a sentimental old fool. It's only a kindly feeling I have for her. You're collecting all this for Letty Thatcher. You seen right through me, didn't you, Mr. Dillon? Well, I think it's fine. I think it's a good thing, only... No, I don't want to hear no more onlys. I got her some food and some clothes and a little spog of money. Ain't enough to wad a shotgun with, really, but it'll do her. Well, how do you mean to get it to Letty? Get it to her? Well, it's plain as day. I'll just... All I got to do is just... All I... Well, you can't post it, Chester. No stage runs along the Solomon River nearer. Well, I... I hadn't thought that through. Oh, Marshal. Chester. I thought you'd gone by now, Crown. Fixing to leave right now. Wanted to ask you a favor, Marshal. Is that so? Wonder if you'd mind telegraphing ahead to the Marshal at Abilene, telling him my name's been cleared... I'd like to settle there, and I wouldn't want no marks against my name right off. Well, I guess I could be arranged, Crown. Mr. Dillon? Um, you're heading for Abilene now? Well, my horse is outside. Well, maybe you can do us a favor, Crown. We like these parcels dropped off at Letty Thatcher's. Now, that wouldn't be out of your way. My horse ain't no pack mule, you know. Ain't but just a few little... You things. mean to set up in business in Abilene, you say? friend runs the Trails in saloon said I could buy in. Uh-huh. Uh, guess if I want you to send that telegram, I'd best oblige you. Huh? Well, now, you're nice to offer to take these crown. I'll just carry them on out for you. Somehow, I get the idea you were just waiting for me. We'll be much obliged, Crown. I'll uh, send a telegram right away. And you'll tell Letty hello for us, will you? Sure, Marshal. Sure, I will. Are 
Are you out of tune due to irregularity? Then help yourself get back in tune with Kellogg's All Brand. Pleasant, isn't it? The feeling of well-being you get when constipation from lack of bulk is no longer a worry. When harsh, irritating drug laxatives can be thrown away. Because Kellogg's All Bran is the normal, natural way to regularity. Its whole brand content gentles away constipation, supplies your system with the bulk-forming foods you need for youthful regularity. And it tastes good, too. Fact is, Kellogg's All Bran is the one and only whole brand cereal that combines proved effectiveness with appetizing taste and crispness. So if you're out of tune... Help yourself get back in tune, as millions do, with Kellogg's All Brand. A double L hyphen B R A N. Kellogg's All Brand. By Ding Letty sure is going to be surprised. Us showing up here not a week after Crown comes through. I still don't see why she stays on out here. She'd be much better off in town. Uh, I'll water the horses, Mr. Dillon. Oh, here. You want to take the tonic doc sent with you? Oh, you bring it when you come back, Chester. All right, you thank you. I will. Laddie. It's Matt Dillon. Laddie. You come any closer, I'll blow you off the prairie. Now, Letty, put that shotgun down. Any nearer at all, I'll kill you. Well, what's wrong, Letty? What's happened to you? You go on. Go on back and tell the good people of Dodge. I sure thank them. Only the clothes is ripped and he ate the food. And the money's not worth much now. Crown was here then. Huh? Here? <laughs> here three days and nights. So don't come to collect any thank yous. I paid, Marshal. I paid for all was given me. Now, Letty, you need care. You can't stay on here. I'm going to take that gun, and you're going to go back to Dodge City. No. I'm through with men forcing me. I'll die or I'll kill, but I'm not enduring anymore. Letty, I'm not going to harm you. Now, I'm your friend. I am not going to harm you, Letty. Now, you give me that gun. No. Come on. Oh, God, no. Chester! Come up here! Oh, my lamb. But... Oh, ma'am. This is Crown's work, Chester. I want you to stay here. When she's able, pack her up and take her back to Dodge. Oh, yes, sir, I sure will, but what about you? I'm riding to Abilene. <laughs> Marshal Dillon, welcome to Trail's End. <laughs> That's for Letty, Crown. Now get up. Now wait a minute. Why, she not worth us fighting over, Marshal. I ought to know. A why widow that... woman, sick and in need. What kind of a brute are you? She's asking for it. Staying out there alone, why any man would... <laughs> If anybody cares, he needs a doctor. Bad. Come in. Ah, hello, Letty. Well, Marshal Dillon... I wondered if you'd be coming to call. Well, I've been out of town. Doc says you're coming along fine. Well, I, I declare that folks here have been so kind. I near forgot how kind and gentle folks can be. Chester, Miss Kitty, Doc, and Ma Smalley. Hey, Ma says she's having trouble keeping you down. <laughs> well, I, I got to pay my keep. I can't always be taken. Well, there's time, Letty. You just get strong and well again. 
Marshal, I... I was wrong. I faulted on so many things. What happened was my doing. Staying on when you tried to get me to leave. Well, you just try to blot it out, Letty. That's best. Yeah. I'm remembering lots of things. All of it. It's right that I do. Luther rest him. Seeing the good of it out here. Wanting to make a place for us. All I could ever see was what we were losing. Uh, you lost a lot. But folks here, the, the most of them are building. A, a town, a life. I'm going to be a part of it. Part of the good. I owe it to Luther. No, you owe it to yourself, Letty. I tell you, the West needs women. Women to be part of the good. Well, for so long, I just said to myself... I wish I'd die. Well, I wish you'd live, Letty. But you're the only one can do that. Nobody else can do that for you. <laughs> well, that's what I'm coming to know, Marshal. That's what I'm coming to know. time you refresh. Enjoy a frosty, ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. Sociability, Charlie. All right, Kay, how's this? Pepsi is light. Refreshes without filling. You like to refresh? Have a Pepsi right now. Well, offer it to everybody, Charlie. I will. Enjoy Pepsi at the fountain. It's delicious at home, too. Have one at lunch or with a snack. Charlie. At the beach or at dinner. Wherever you go, wherever you're thirsty. Pepsi is there. It's here, too, in our Be Sociable song. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair, get in there. Be sociable, have a Pepsi. For the weekend, have plenty of Pepsi around. Pick up an extra carton today. C.K.? I'm sociable. With Pepsi, everyone is. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was freshly written for Gunsmoke by Kathleen Height, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Virginia Christine and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. Latest news follows, then Mitch Miller on the CBS Radio Network. KNX AM and FM, CBS Radio in Los Angeles. Washington, D.C., the city of the fox, the needle, and the punch.